Cellulose nanocrystals are very small particles that come from cellulose after they've been liberated with chemicals. They're about 15 nanometers by 150 to 250 nanometers. What that means exactly is if you look at a cellulose fiber and say it's the size of an ice hockey rink, a pen or a pencil on that surface of that icy hockey rink would be about the size of this nanocrystal. Crystals have unique properties and enable us to use them in various different areas, such as biocomposites for potentially adding strength to materials, to thicken products like coatings, to basically allow the material to be more evenly spread on surfaces, perhaps drilling muds in the oil industry, and also we could potentially use this as a novel area for de-icing in the aviation industry. What we're doing is we're taking market pulp and reacting it with chemicals to produce these nanocrystals, which are cellulose-based. We are in our CNC pilot plant. This you're looking at here is our reactor's 200-liter glass line that we add our material and convert it from cellulose into CNC. After the material has been reacted, it gets pumped into a tank, diluted, neutralized, and then we start to separate our material the first step of that separation or purification is using a 6500 RPM centrifuge. So the main objective of our pilot plant is to basically produce CNC at appropriate levels so that we can provide samples for our clients so they can start working with it and look at it various different ways of applying this material into their various different products. This is our tangential flow microfiltration system. After one or two passes through our centrifuge, the material can no longer be separated, the impurities from the product using the centrifuge. So then we have to go to filtration technology. And basically what we have is we have a bank of filtration modules that have a pore size that basically allows the impurities to pass through while retaining our product. At this stage then we concentrate by removing the excess water and we prepare it for our dryer. Another main objective of, of the now crystalline silos is to start giving feedback to potential companies that will use our technology we've developed here and build to a commercial scale. What we have in this 7800 liter tank is absolutely purified CNC material after our filtration for the final polishing of our material. We want to get the material out to the end users and get their development departments to work with this material and get excited about it and want to continue using more and more of our material. There may be companies that might be interested in demonstrating the capabilities of their equipment in the environment that we have available here to help them try and sell their equipment. After spray drying, what we have as a resulting material is a fine white powder that is ready to ship to clients. One great thing that we might be able to do here in the province is we've got pulp mills, for example, who've, who've got one or maybe two products. What we want to do is continue diversifying these facilities so that they can not only perhaps make pulp, but they're also making other types of material. Eventually, also, we're hoping that there's other streams that could be utilized, so suddenly we have a facility that's almost like a biorefinery that's producing a number of products that are making its way out to the marketplace. I believe a world-class organization that is involved with uh, applied research and, and development should benefit twofold. One with their client, increase their value and their profitability and their competitiveness in the marketplace. And secondly, increases our knowledge and our expertise in an area so that we continue to be a world-class organization in the area that we're working in.